Watch a movie, get inspired, give back, help a charity. It's time for a movie karma watch party. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of uh, Movie Karma. This is a series that we're doing to celebrate socially conscious films all around the world. Uh, my name is Jared Milrad. I'm the founder of Movie Karma, and we're really excited to have a very special guest, a very special filmmaker uh, who's coming to us from Guatemala. He's a director of a film called Her Place, which we celebrated as part of our monthly A Show for a Change Film Festival. Uh, and his name is Gustavo Garcia Solaris. Uh, Gustavo, welcome to the conversation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. So we're going to start off by screening your film, uh, your short film, Her Place, and then we're going to do a Q&A with you uh, on the back end. So let's get started. Thanks so much uh, for sharing your film with us, Gustavo. We really loved it, and we were proud to you know, celebrate it as part of our A Show for Change Film Festival. Thanks. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So we uh, we had a number of questions for you, so we'll, we'll dive right in. Uh, first and foremost, we'd love to hear people's backgrounds so and how you became a filmmaker, how you got to do social impact work. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I... Uh... Well, in, in the world of art, I started as a musician, like I, I was in bands for a long time. And, and so that's how I started, like in the cultural scene here in Guatemala City. And then like, uh, I think back in 2012, like we needed a video for my band. So I decided that I, I, I was going to do it because we didn't have money. So that's, that's how it started. And I don't know, like I, I found like a, a, a big interest in it. And then I started uh, working with... Uh, <clears throat> different like social organizations NGOs and stuff like that so I started like doing like documentaries short documentaries on projects and yeah and then it went on from that like I started traveling and I don't know like it, it started as a hobby and I ended up being my my profession in a way mm -hmm. yeah so yeah it comes from I guess music and uh, social work that's how I, I got into it yeah Cool. And do you do you prefer uh, social impacts re related narratives or social justice projects? Yeah, yeah. I think my, my like my my favorite would be just like a documentary uh, with and like related to social causes or yeah or like yeah cultural stuff like identity or this kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, and, and where do you think that, that comes from? Is it, you know, that desire to tell stories that are impactful and have an impact with your art? Is that from your, your background, growing up in Guatemala, is it from your family or something else? Well, yeah, definitely. When you, when you grew up in a, in a city like this, like uh, you face a lot of uh, injustice and it's pretty, it's a very tense um, atmosphere. And it's also, but also at the same time, you, you meet like beautiful people that are like just dealing with it and so you get inspired a lot but also like heartbroken at the same time so that's like a, a mix and so also like the idea that filmmaking can be like a, a way to amplify a voice I think it's also like a, a thing that I really like I, I love storytelling so I don't know like it's pretty much like I, I try to do like stories of people that like I like first like I get like an impact from it and so that that gives me like the sign that okay this is probably going to work with mm. more people yeah I, and and we thought that was particularly interesting that you chose as a male filmmaker uh you chose a female uh subject and then really the focus of the film is on is on women and women's stories uh particularly women of color's story how did you come about that decision and how, how did that why did you make that that decision I think it's two things. One is that I was in, uh, I worked for a project, which is like a, the, the project that helped us to, to develop the story. It's called Global Platforms. And I went to Zambia in uh, probably the end of 2018. And there was like this event where there were like different, you know, different cultural, uh, you know, like people dancing or I don't know. And then like comes Vanessa and does like her place. And it's just one of those things where, where she ends and everybody stays quiet for like five seconds, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like, like, 
Shit. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. It was like because seeing her doing it in person is it's another thing, right? Mm -hmm. It was a lot of people, and she was kind of like struggling with it, but like at the same time, like like the, I don't know, the, the strength was there. So that was like okay, okay, I have I, like I was there to do something else. I was working on a different story there, but I was like okay, I I have to talk to her. Like I have to mm -hmm. do something with this because I don't know. It's just I just felt it. And then, like looking back on it, I think it's it's important for us as men, like to also like hear those messages and like get that message because you know, like to be part of of that, and also recognize uh, that uh, maybe some of us haven't been aware of this or, yeah. So like I I believe that as men we should like also uh, get these messages and like Vanessa's poem is just exactly like she wrote it like there's nothing changed on that. So it's more like I helped to create like a, you know, like a, I don't know, like a vehicle like, or something to work with filmmaking to, to share that message on different uh, places because spoken word is mostly done in, you know, like, I don't know, I guess venues or stuff like that. It's like, I mean, I guess it's like a genre, like a spoken word video, but it's not, um, yeah. It's, I don't know, it wasn't her, her, her idea to do it this way. So okay, think, yeah. that's interesting. So, so it wasn't uh, Vanessa's idea to do it quite this way. So what was, that, what was that conversation like or that dialogue with her in terms of how you wanted to go about presenting the film? Yeah, I was like, hey, uh, <laughs> I was with the camera. Like I recorded the, that, uh, that time, I recorded it. Of course, the sounding wasn't that good and all this, but, but I have that somewhere. And, uh, and I was like, hey, that, was, that was just, uh, that was very good and and i don't know like if if you would like to to record it and she was like kind of like yeah sure let, like let's do it and but the funny thing is that then i got like very busy with was what i was actually there to do <laughs> and and i kind of like lost like contact with her for for like the last week i was going to be there and she like wrote me like okay are we going to do this or what and i'm like okay let's do it and it was like Pretty much, I think the last day I was there, that uh, we, we just went to this walking bridge in Lusaka and like, and okay, Vanessa, like my idea was to do that because I was walking in that uh, in that uh, walking bridge every day, and so I was like, okay, this is a, this is a really cool location to do that. Like I was already thinking how to, but didn't know if it was gonna be too much for Vanessa because. Of course, we didn't get any permits or anything. It was just like, yeah. we just got there and like, okay, let's do it. And Vanessa had to do it several times and she had to get like, I guess more comfortable, but I, I really admire her, her strength because all the people you see walking by, like they don't know what's going on, right? So it's, it kind of fit with yeah. this idea of, of a voice that people just kind of pass by. So like, yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. So, the, so the walking bridge is a background, and the, and the stranger is walking by. That's almost a that's really a symbol, or you know, sort of speaks to to that idea of a woman's place and being ignored and not heard. Yeah, like being there, but sometimes it's like it passes by. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and where and where exactly was this walking bridge? You said it was it was nearby to where you were. Uh, yeah, it's in Lusaka, Lusaka, oh. Sandia, which is the. I can't remember the part of it, but yeah, it's the, the capital of, of Zambia. Um, and yeah, I'm, we're curious too about the animation. We, we thought it was really unique and it added a lot to the, to the film. Uh, for those of you who are not listening by video, the animation kind of, it, it sort of played into and part of uh, the, the, the whole film. How did that come to be and what was the decision process in, in adding animation? Well, the whole animation, first of all, like it's Sofia Cabrera's work. Like she's a, a, like a wonderful artist and like, it's like her style and like, uh, yeah, she's just, just amazing, right? Like it's just out of this world. Like it took the idea to another level. Like the idea of the animation, like it started as, um, like I had the material, I had like different like angles and, and yeah, from, like I, I put up like a version, but I felt like maybe because it's not the same to look at the person do the spoken word, right? Because you're you're locked in, but because you're live, 
So, but it kind of like, it needed something else to get you into those words and like into, into like the feeling of the whole thing. So I started thinking about maybe animation would complement uh, in a better way her words and the message and like it could expand, like it could kind of work like being inside Vanessa's mind and, and heart or in this case, like a lot of, uh, of women around the world because that's also the thing that I think uh, for Sofia was like also a very personal project because she, of course she's from Guatemala. So also like, I guess, like she's been around a lot of that. So like, like her, like Vanessa's words, like really had an impact on her. So ap after that, we just had like a lot of conversations in which parts, how we could represent it. And it, and it was all her like uh, at the, in the end, like, yeah. That's right. Yeah, we 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 were curious about that as well. Like in terms of the images in the animation, you know, like Vanessa's big body, the the use of color, um, and intermittently paper windows, the ocean. How how did you decide which elements to put in the animation and which parts of of Vanessa's uh, spoken word piece to to animate? Yeah, I, I think all of, a lot of those ideas come, came from like conversations with also Fermin Argueta, he's like the art director and like, and like, yeah, and Sofia. And we were just like talking a lot on what we could represent. And I think the big body that's Sofia, like it, it represents like being just too big for the place you're at. And like the, win, like the little window, like you can't really see, for example, this idea of that you can't, like some people have never seen the sea. Like I always thought that was like a, a very deep, uh, I don't know. It's just, I, I have a thing with the sea. Like I, I have a, like a, I don't know if sea sometimes represents death, but not in this case, but yeah. Like I have a thing of, of sea as like, like the infinite or like, yeah. Like it gives you all the energy or, or yeah. Kind of purifies you or takes you to another place. So that idea of like being out of that room or that place in this case uh, is just um yeah like the sea is everything right it's immensity it's like a world of infinite possibilities and yeah so that's like window light uh, the sea kind of like that right kind of that that expansion view right yeah mm -hmm. expansion of yeah. possibility uh yeah. We want to also ask about you know what struck you because when you as you said as you described it you first heard but has to deliver her spoken word piece live, um, so we're curious of what what landed with you uh, when you first heard it was there a line or two that stood out to you was there a part that really resonated with you? I think I was hooked from the beginning, mm -hmm. like it's just like that first verse like the one we have in the in the trailer that you guys uh, check out in uh, Instagram. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, check, please, yeah, you check that movie Carmen Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Yes, just that that first verse was enough for me to like because I don't know, like the words are good, but it it also has this melody to it. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing that I have I have received like uh, the few people that have seen it is like, okay, but th that's like a song, right? Like people think that you know, like it was like a, there was a beat, and then Vanessa kind of like. Uh, did spoken word on that bass, but it's I, the music came after that. So it's like very musical in a word, like it kind of rhymes. It has a like a really cool structure when you look at it, like in verses. Mm. So I don't know, it it flew like it was like kind of like music to me. I think that's also like what really brought me in. And it has just so moments that are like ugh, okay, it's, it's just. Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Jared Milrad, the founder of Movie Karma. Thanks so much for stopping by our page. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this channel with your friends and family so we can continue to transform entertainment into action.